There's no way to do justice to this, uh, pun intended. I, I asked Jaron over the weekend, sent him an IM and said, please get Jimmy Justice on, and he did. And there's literally, I don't know, 50, 100, 200, I don't know, videos on the Jimmy Justice YouTube site. And uh, he catches police breaking every law you can imagine. A lot of it petty stuff, but drinking in their cars, smoking cigarettes, parking in front of fire hydrants, driving the wrong way. And he and in New York, they throw the book at you. Uh, I mean, here, here's one today. Upper East Side woman ticketed for using city trash can. Says sanitation worker was aggressive, frightened the bleep out of her, the double hockey sticks out of her. And uh, it goes on to talk about, yes, they do ticket you if you're seen throwing paper away in a trash can. She threw a part of a newspaper in the trash. So it's all part of the environmental police. Uh, it's all about raising taxes. I've seen videos of mainline reporters uh, while they're choking an ABC News reporter for no reason, smoking cigars while they do it, acting like goons. And so I wanted to get Jimmy Justice on, and, and we could play clips of this, but you just got to go to his YouTube channel. I can't, again, uh, 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 do justice to it. And the incredible thing is he's usually very polite until they come over and slap his camera out, even when they're off duty with their wife, with their kids. They'll pull up. Park in a handicap, park in a, uh, you know, a, a red zone. They'll park in front of a uh, water main, uh, a fire hydrant. And at the same time, and I've been in New York a lot, they, if you ask a cop directions, most of the time they'll scream at you and say, do I look like a phone book? Uh, I mean, I've talked to Austin police, I know, who've gone up there, uh, you know, to visit New York. And, officer, do you know where this is? And they're like, do I look like a directory to you? Do I? An example of the unions being out of control, but I've never experienced anything. I've been in third world countries like New York police. I'm not saying some aren't good. Some are very nice. Uh, but I want to play a short clip, and this is just one of his newest videos. Um, we'll ask him how many he actually has. I, I didn't count them. Where it's a cop with his family in his car. In, in you know, He's a supervisor. He's in a uh, you know unmarked police car, but it's you know got government stickers and all that. And he's parked in front of the fire hydrant. And he goes in the store, shops, comes out. And Jimmy Justice is videoing, and he comes over and you know tries to knock the camera out of his hand, and then says, "I didn't knock the, didn't try to knock the, you know, didn't hit your camera." It's this mind game. We had New York cops. This is in uh, Truth Rising. Run up to us, dozens of them, drunk, and attack and break two of our cameras. I mean, breaking microphones bolted down in metal. These are like five, six thousand dollar cameras. Just hitting them, slapping them, pushing on us, just because they didn't like us and giggling while they do it. I mean, it's like gang members. Uh, so let's play a short clip here uh, of uh, Jimmy Justice um, you know, simply videotaping a police officer parked in front of a fire hydrant. Here it is. There's the officer getting in his car, putting the goods in. There's the fire hydrant. This is only part of it. He has them pulling up and going in and coming out. And then the officer goes around the back. I'm narrating this for radio listeners. I forget we're not just PrisonPlanet.tv. Now the cop comes over. Boom! Hits his camera. You can't touch me. Why? Well, I can do whatever I want. That's a man, honey. Why are you allowed to touch me? I touch you. What did I touch you? What man, honey? You went to me. Do you normally uh, block fire hydrants and misuse your official police department placard when you go shopping with your family, officer? Okay, that's enough. CD, buddy. A command discipline is much worse than a parking summons. Okay, let's stop right there to top it off. And well, I mean, he goes on and, and has some text about it. The cop comes over, hits his camera, grabs at it, and says, "I can do whatever I want," and then engages in the double think of, "I didn't do anything. I didn't touch your camera." Even though it's on video, he slows it down, grabs it, tries to throw it down. And I, I had MSNBC reporters attack myself with a with a knife. They cut my equipment, uh, attack Richard Reeves. It's all on video in uh, in uh, the extras of Obama deception. It's online, and the MSNBC would laugh and say we didn't touch you. They would they would attack with a knife, cut up our equipment on video and say I didn't do anything. Rah! And with mind control, that was shown in court. Many juries would go whoa. They didn't do anything. I mean, they could be stabbing us with daggers, with blood spraying out. I'm not stabbing you. And people are like, well, he said he's not. So it's a conspiracy theory that he is. This is the mind control the public is under. 
Uh, going to uh, Jimmy Justice here. Uh, here's his bio he sent us. As far as bio goes, you can just say that I'm a video vigilante or caparazzi. I make videos of New York City police officers and traffic enforcement agents violating the law. In New York City, there's a system of predatory ticketing. The cops scour the streets and write summons for every petty, nonsensical violation. Well, I was arrested for something that wasn't even an arrestable offense, famously. Not for public safety, but rather to raise revenue for the city. I make videos of cops violating those same traffic laws while they are running personal errands on the company time. I put these videos on my YouTube page so the public pressure can force City Hall to do more to curb the abuse of authority in the police department. In the course of four years of making these videos, I've had two cameras broken and I've been threatened with arrest numerous times. I have found that a video camera is the best tool for showing the truth. Jimmy Justice 47 Five three on YouTube, or just search Jimmy Justice, an amazing guy. Jimmy, uh, how many videos have you shot? Oh, I have probably uh, a twenty to twenty five hours of footage, uh, but that doesn't amount to twenty five hours of video. Sometimes I will stand uh, out on the street for ten minutes and wait for an officer to come out of uh, McDonald's where he's been eating lunch, and I wait for him to get into his car. Uh, that's part illegally, perhaps blocking a fire hydrant or otherwise, and then I can confront him. Uh, but I, I have many videos, dozens of them, on YouTube uh, showing the same police department that goes around New York City uh, in order to raise revenue, and of course it's not for public safety. And they write 14 million parking violations every year uh, to New York City residents uh, for the most petty and nonsensical things. But then when they're running their own personal errands or they're getting their lunch or even when they're off duty in their own personal vehicle, they, uh, they have this placard that they put in the windshield that says NYPD, uh, and, and that gives them immunity from uh, obeying any of the traffic laws because, uh, as we know, the police department does not uh, prosecute each other uh, in most cases uh, unless there is an outcry uh, from the public, uh, which forces City Hall to do something about it. And that usually happens when there's a video that's uh, gone viral on the Internet or on television news. Why did you start doing this? I started doing this uh, because I got one too many uh, unfair parking tickets that I didn't feel that I uh, deserved. And I just uh, noticed some of the same officers writing me these tickets. And then when I complained and I said, I'm really parked legally, it's not in your jurisdiction, to give me a ticket for this situation. They would just laugh at me and uh, curse me out and then just go on to the next car and uh, write them a ticket as well. And then I would notice these same people, uh, when they're getting their lunch, when they're running their personal errands, they violating the same laws. And I, it was just this double standard. That, Did you uh, see the you footage know? in Rochester where they arrest the lady for videotaping in her own yard? Then they had a community action meeting about supporting her legal defense fund. And the cops, it turns out, even people that weren't part of the meeting, descended on the neighborhood, just a regular neighborhood, and would go up to cars that were more than 12 inches, 12 and a half inches out from the curb, and would give them tickets and laugh at them. And when I've been in New York, and I've been in third world countries, as I said earlier, the police either wear their hats way back on their head or way down on their head. Luke Radowski shot footage when he was protesting at Building 7. Uh, the security guards come out and say, we're going to say you have a bomb. We know you don't. We're going to call in a bomb threat. We're going to put you in prison. And they call in the fake bomb threat on tape. Cops show up and go, yeah, you know, it's right. It's, it's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon with mobsters. They grab the camera, say, it's a gun. You're going to jail. I mean, the cops are so corrupt. These, these were Port Authority in that case that they would in, uh, engage in a fake bomb threat and then even give him the camera back when they said, look, we're going to put you in jail. If you don't, leave for a bomb. Now leave. And, and Luke said, well, I guess I'll leave. My God. I mean, so there's no indictments. I mean, here in Texas, I'll tell you right now, if a cop got caught uh, trying to claim somebody had a bomb when they knew they didn't, that cop would go to the penitentiary and should. I mean, I, I'm not trying to bash New York because I love New Yorkers. I like the people in New York. They're great people. How did your cops get so corrupt? Is it the union? I mean, are, are they unstoppable? Because I've never been treated uh, I mean, I've been walking down the street in New York when the crowds aren't even that heavy, and cops will just stand there going, move along, and I, and, and I turn back like, is this actually happening? I mean, are they crazy? Do they only hire 
uh, crazy people. What's going on there? Uh, I would say that um, the longer that the system goes unchecked by the public, uh, the more arrogant uh, the system, the police officers, uh, the government can become. And uh, we need people out there with video cameras. We need people like you, Alex, uh, to get on the radio every day and uh, tell us what's really going on behind the scenes. We need to raise public awareness. We need to have people learn their rights of what they can do uh, and what they should expect uh, from the government and how to recognize uh, when the police department is not doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, it, it's, when we have a good system of checks and balances, uh, that's when we, we can uh, keep this corruption to a minimum. There, uh, historically, in the New York City Police Department, there has always been corruption. Unfortunately, it, it, it will probably always occur. But uh, we can do our best to minimize it and, uh, and keep it to the lowest possible uh, level. I want to comment on two or three things that you uh, just mentioned. The case in Rochester, I saw that video, and uh, that was one of the most offensive uh, videos that I've ever seen. Uh, this woman uh, was in the front yard of her house on her private property, and she was videotaping uh, the police pulling somebody over. And they took offense, and they, they trespassed on her private property, and they beat her up and arrested her. Um, and you have to think about this. What was it that the police didn't want videotaped? And uh, if you want me to guess, I would say they were going to do some kind of illegal search on the person they pulled over. Uh, they were going to do some tricks to try to uh, find a reason to arrest this person or confiscate his property. And they didn't want that videotape. And then uh, a week later, they had a community meeting uh, in order to uh, maybe raise legal funds or talk about how to defend uh, this woman against the charges uh, of obstructing governmental administration that the Rochester police threw at her. And yeah, I saw this video, uh, five or six police cars that could have been going around Rochester actually uh, arresting drug Well, dealers, that was my uh, point. Arresting mothers, and they're going with yardsticks. And if you're more than 12 inches from the curb, you're going to get a summons. That's ridiculous. That's not the way to use your police department. Well, what, but, police but, but here's department. what I'm saying, though. That's ha crime. Have you ever seen the footage of uh, Luke Radowski? with a yes. permitted, th and they come up and say, we're going to say you got bombs. And, and then the cops are so crazy, they they admit all this, say his camera's a gun, say leave or you're going to jail for terrorism, and hand him the camera back. I mean, those were hardcore felonies being committed by them. I mean, well, what's going on? Yeah, now, Alex, I am familiar with your work, and I've seen some of your documentaries. Uh, actually, my favorite one is when you sneak into the Bohemian Grove, Yes. And uh, secretly taped that, that weird, bizarre, satanic ritual that they do there. That, that was some great stuff. And I also saw the footage um, that you're discussing where the cops say, we're going to lie. We're going to say you have a bomb. And it will take the judge a couple of days until they figure out that you don't have a bomb. But meanwhile, you'll spend the weekend in jail. And that's so unfortunate that the, that the cops can lie and get away with it. And, 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 and they have that much power. And uh, I wanted to discuss one more thing. Uh, you know, there was this, you know, circus trial in Florida uh, about uh, Casey Anthony, who uh, was alleged to have killed her child, and she was found not guilty of murder, but she was found guilty on four counts of lying to the police. Now, I agree, if somebody hinders a, a murder investigation by lying to the police, uh, they should be guilty of a crime. However, it made me think, she's guilty of lying to the police, but what about when the police lie to us? Courts have ruled that police can lie now. Uh, and also now they've been, the FBI has been caught lying to federal judges. I mean, it's called tyranny. And, and yes. you know, quite frankly, first the feds said you're going to go to jail for lying to police like Martha Stewart. And they technically claim she lied because of an accounting error. Uh, and so I, overall, there we didn't have this previously, so I'm against it. I mean, I mean, I could see the rationale, you know, for saying, well, you lie to us, but but now they say, well, in the first interview with the FBI, you said that you had a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, but it shows you had twenty thousand over here, and you're like, well, I was talking to him, and I forgot that CD that my grandma gave me, and they're like, sorry. I mean, I watch folks go to prison for for quote lies like that. But then meanwhile, the police now call it as a joke, lie-ifying. And it's well known they now train major police departments how to lie on the stand. Yeah, and, and besides for lying, you know, the police department have their tricks uh, that they do to intimidate people. 
Like if they walk up to somebody in the street and say, let me see your ID. You know, I, I, the laws may vary state to state, but in New York, I don't think you have to carry ID. No, no. I don't A lot of them try to enforce failure to ID. It's been overturned by every court in the land. Yeah, in New York City, the police are actually not uh, allowed to ask for your ID unless you've either just committed a crime or or are about to commit a crime. Reasonable suspicion, yeah. The reasonable suspicion that you're about to commit a crime. So if we just walk down the street and say, let me see your ID, you really don't have to show it. And uh, I suggest that uh, all of your listeners should contact their local uh, chapter of the ACLU. Uh, here in New York, it's called the New York Civil Liberties Union. And they usually uh, print out and give pamphlets uh, to what you should and should not do when encountered by the police. Uh, people have to learn their rights. Of what but, but I mean, my question to you not. is, why are New York police, and as I said, I've been in really bad third world countries and cops don't act like this. Uh, I mean, I've seen some bad stuff in Mexico, but they're, they're even more professional while, while they're robbing you. How did New York get where the police look like an archetypal goon out of a mobster movie? I, I mean, how, how did it get like that? I don't know how it got like that. It, it was just many years of being unchecked, and there is not a good system of checks and balances. Uh, you know, in the 30s, there was a big corruption scandal. In the 60s, in the 80s, they, they had the Mullen Commission. Yeah, they'd have to fire 75 per, 76% of all the detectives because 70 plus percent were dealing narcotics. And, and now they just right. let them do it. It's just like, well, we run things. And so, of course, cops are going to walk up and go, Oh, the goons called me. They say you got a bomb. You gonna go to jail? You got the bomb? <laughs> he gonna go to jail? I'm sorry, folks. This is too much. Look, I want to spend 30 minutes on it, and so I'm gonna do it tomorrow. And I'm gonna make Jaron stand in there with a rubber mallet and hit me in the head with it if I don't. Because I want to talk about the fact that poor people are now having their children taken all over the United States for just being poor. And I remember one time, and I, I, I had to stop doing it about 11 years ago, I went to the hospital, because some listeners of mine who were being harassed by CPS were about to have a baby, and a blonde-haired, blue-eyed baby, they can get half a mil for those, generally 300 thou. And there's been admitted quotas for kids all over the country that have come out. And the poor folks adopting them don't know, you know what's going on. That's why we're here informing them. Uh, and I was there when the mother was crying. And when, by the time I got there, I opened the door. Mike Hansen was with me as we swung the camera up, and the, the cop... They have special cops assigned to the CPS groups. Had his hand on the back of her neck, squeezing her to make her sign the document. And the documents they filled out to take the baby weren't even the baby's name. It was from a case three years before with some other family. They go to judges with just fake same forms. And the judges just, just take the kids. Uh, these family courts didn't exist till the 20s. They're a eugenics court. They would order sterilization right up into the 80s. Uh, and uh, I know we got Jimmy Justice on with us. It just, it, it, it tears my guts out. And I literally controlled myself, didn't attack the cop who looked like a demon. I mean, I, it was like, he looked satanic. He looked, he was smiling. I, I, controlling myself was so hard getting out of there that I crawled in the car. And Mike was in his car, started crying. And I literally, I even called into a local radio show and then had started crying. People misunderstood and thought my kids had been grabbed. Well, he got so upset, it must have been his kids. I literally cried worse than when my grandfathers died, my grandmother died. It, 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 it and, and I say I have courage. The truth is, folks, that I cannot be around it. the anguish of parents with wolves taking their children. And I can't be around it because, because I was one centimeter from, well, and I'm telling you folks, justice needs to come in this country. It needs to come through an awakening process. And I, I heard the, this poor black family on the news this morning had their kids taken for no reason. And I, you know, and every time I start getting a few tears in my eyes on air, when I'm really honest with people, I get idiot emails saying that's fake. You know what? Uh, you you say that so you don't have to focus on the pain of what's happening to these children and these families. You say that as an ad hominem distraction. I, I'm fighting right now to not remember those memories to start bawling out of absolute soul-wrenching pain because I have my soul. I have my soul. I'm nothing special, but I have a soul. I'm awake. Going back to Jimmy Justice, I didn't mean to distract off, but I... 
uh, into other issues. I know I know they take kids in New York. It came out in New York Daily News five, six years ago. They take little kids away there for medical experiments and even test pesticides on them. Did you ever see that in the New York News? Not in the mainstream news, that's for sure. And I was in New York Daily News, and it's just like, now a CPS worker did, did, did blow the whistle on that because they one little black kid, they poisoned to death, they killed him. Uh, in closing, Jimmy Justice, where's the best place to see what you're doing? Because all Americans need to do similar things. Uh, as of now, the best place is on YouTube, but I don't know how much longer my videos will be on YouTube. And I might be a little bit of an ingrate uh, because YouTube uh, did put me on the map uh, to say anything bad about them. But once they were bought out by Google... Uh, they just started censoring uh, things, uh, political speech. They, they censor so many things, and they pulled some of my videos off the air uh, without explanation. No, I know, the, and, and, and you've got to challenge. Family. You've got to challenge those filings when you file yeah. that form. It's in federal court under perjury. But I, I would file. See, we, we can't let them run us out of there because that's where half the video views in the world are. But I would agree, yeah. you should copy your stuff to other other video sites as well. Jimmy Justice, I want to salute you. God bless you. I look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Thank you for uh, your radio show and all the good work and the good information you put out there. Well, I try, the, I try the best I can.